Welcome back to part two of working on this tandem axle trailer. Today I'm going to be taking the uh, wheels and hubs off and then driving to Texas, get my other set off my other trailer. So I'll do a rundown on that one, coming back and installing them and we might throw a deck on it. We'll find out. Let's get started. So we are fish officially in uh, spaceship mode here and uh, all these wheel bearings seem to be in pretty good shape. There's no play in any of them really. And uh, I made the decision. I was I was kind of on the fence about if I was going to do only one axle with brakes or both. I'm just going to go ahead and do two. Might as well overbuild it. Um, and then I may try and get some new leaf spring bushings in here. I'm not really sure how hard that's going to be. But um, yeah, let me pop this dust cover off, pop these wheel bearings out, get all those hubs off. And I'll show you what the finished product is before I go get my other set. So a brief rundown of this trailer. I bought this back in 2018 for $300 off a guy at a scrap yard. It's a five and a half by 12 foot tandem axle trailer that used to be a RV that somebody basically just stripped it down to a frame, threw some wood on it and called it a tandem axle trailer. I bought it, ripped all the old decking off of it and basically rebuilt everything except for the axles themselves and the frame and uh man this thing was a absolute workhorse for me it was a square tube frame i got rear-ended in it and it was fine made a ton of money with it used it to install furniture all over texas hauled tons of scrap metal with it but it's just a little bit too small a little bit too sketchy and a little bit too old i think it's from the from the 70s had the night the uh, dexter 944 axles on it that i swapped over to what you'll see in this next clip and uh yeah so it's time to retire the old girl and move on to something a little bit more modern. If anyone's interested in buying it, please let me know in the comments and we'll figure something out. But uh, yeah, let's move on. All right, so here's my old trailer. This is old Bessie. Nice brand new everything. Brand new drums. So time to pull these off, put the old ones back on. We'll get after it. Probably gonna take this toolbox off too. Okay, so we are about 90% through. As you can see, great a hack job with the old backing plates and the new hub on there. But if it works, it works. This thing's probably gonna go to the junkyard anyway. So moving on. All right, so we are back in Alabama with all of our goodies here. So I've got four of the 225 75 15 trailer tires that are from 2019 but they have almost no mileage on them not dry rotted so they're i mean brand new four of these hubs with the brake drums and then i had these in storage here uh four of these backing plates with the shoes and everything the only thing i had to buy which was surprisingly difficult to find was uh, nuts to go on the back of these plates here. So I ended up getting uh, 18 uh, 7 16 by 20 fine thread nuts and 16 grade 8 7 16 uh, washers. I wanted to use grade 8 nuts, but um, I couldn't find them. So we're having to go with, I think these are grade 5, which will, which will be fine. There's not really a reason to go grade eight other than just to be extra, I guess. Uh, and then in this box here, I've got all the bearings and castle nuts and dust caps and everything. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get this side bolted up. I think these tires are going to fit. It may be a little bit tight in the back. Just I don't know what's going on with the suspension, but something is not right um but anyway we will see if this fits well we got pretty close but not all the way so everything fits um they were grinding a little bit on the uh the pads in there i got the bearing the outer bearing in and then tried to put the washer on and naturally, because I'm an idiot, I grabbed the 
wrong washers. Like, see, that one's got a flat side on it and uh, is obviously way too small for the spindle. So, I'm gonna have to go to the trailer dealership tomorrow and get four new washers because I left the ones I need on my old trailer. That's 700 miles away from me. Not a big deal. Uh, and I need to get new cotter pins anyway for this because I forgot, I couldn't, I couldn't find my big box of them. So until tomorrow. All right, so a week after the last clip, I finally got the correct washers in. I ordered these from e-trailer because nobody locally had them, but these are one inch spindle washers. So the diameter of the spindle that goes in here is one inch. And I ordered four more cotter pins. The cost plus shipping on this was $25, which is annoying, but in the grand scheme of things nowadays, it's not too bad. So I should actually be able to make this work. Let's see. Yes, sir. Yep, that's it. All right, let's get this thing put back together. All right, so in this video, I'm finally gonna be putting a VIN number on this trailer all right in that area. And so I ordered a VIN tag off of Amazon that was shipping directly from China. And uh, naturally it's been stuck in a warehouse somewhere in, uh, I'm assuming California for like two weeks. So I paid like 30 bucks for that. So I'm kind of upset, but uh, I'm gonna get in, end up getting a refund on that. And I bought this, uh, I think it's a quarter inch stamping kit from Harbor Freight for like 15 bucks. And then a uh, license plate I found in a parking lot or something. So I'm gonna cut this strip off here and here and then uh, put my VIN on that and then just rivet it to the frame. So I'll get after it and see how this turns out. All right, so there's our VIN tag this thing I also put some DOT tape on it this thing is done turned out really well my suspension fixed itself I threw some uh, PB blaster on all of the um, linkages there and it popped itself back so now it actually rides smooth but yeah that's a wrap on this one catch you on the next one Thanks.